Former Googler and lawyer and now top investor and cowboy shirt enthusiast, Chris Saka has been rising up our Midas list ranks and now joins our billionaire ranks too. We spent the day hanging out in San Francisco, starting at the Ferry Building location of Blue Bottle, the popular fast-growing coffee company he's an investor in. Can I get a cappuccino and a hot chocolate, please? So Chris, you're an investor in Blue Bottle. I think you must be probably the only investor in Blue Bottle who doesn't drink coffee. I mean, I've had like six or seven cups in my life. Okay. I get it. I, I understand why people are so into it. But that investment was actually driven by my wife. And my wife is kind of the silent partner in our business. I mean, she was a really successful advertising creative, understands how people think, and knows when things will be big. Uh, in fact, there are a couple of times I wish I listened to her. Like, I saw Pinterest and was like, uh, I don't really get it. And my wife was like, no, 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 this is the thing. So is it a problem that investors are over-dependent on what they actually use themselves and kind of what their circles care about? Too many investors invest in the things that they just like and are comfortable with and are within their own little bubble. And yet, I think the distinction we like to make is invest in things that we know we can personally impact the outcome of. So I. Everyone could be talking about the hot biotech deal, and it might be on the verge of, of curing cancer, but I cannot do anything to advance the mission of a biotech company, quite literally. And so we pass. As cool as it may seem, if I'm going to mooch, I may as well mooch in the public markets, right? And just throw darts and ride the greens and reds. So if I believe that I can take something that's already a good company and just make it a little more likely to be a success, then that's a rigged game for me. It almost feels unfair, right? And I can just be that much more confident that the investors who give me their money, I'm gonna give them their money back and a lot more after that. After I'd had my caffeine fix and Sack had slurped some cocoa, we hopped in an Uber, the ride-sharing juggernaut most recently valued at more than $40 billion. Saka is one of its very first investors and its funds hold more than a billion dollars of Uber stock. So what do you think was the, uh, has been the most unexpected difficulty to get the system as evolved as it is right now you know, in this end-to-end -end experience? Uh, I mean, obviously one of the expected difficulties was the regulatory environment, but the thing that I think Garrett, Travis, and Ryan, who's the, you know, the GM and, and kind of the third beetle there, would tell you is that we all underestimated the amount of corruption, true, actual corruption and local government sometimes. Like, we literally watch the taxi cabals and lobbies slip kind of money and buy influence in some of these cities. Now the great thing that I also underestimated that Travis never did was the power of the users of this thing to undermine that corruption and just overpower it. We next stopped off at Automatic, the headquarters of WordPress, the largest blogging tool in the world. We were there to talk Twitter, tech, and put Saka's golden touch to the test over a game of shuffleboard. That is such a hot shot. <laughs> Seed investors are often known for taking a more passive or just kind of spectator role at a certain point in passing the torch as their companies mature. Twitter is a public company, and yet it seems like you still are a big vocal supporter and it seems like you have conversations with management. Traditionally you're right, as these companies get bigger I'm just less involved. Uh, Twitter is a little bit different in that, you know, number one, I'm for lack of a better term a power user of the product, right? I have a ton of followers, I use it every day, it's literally been part of my life. Um, and I've been involved with that company as long as DeCoslo has. I mean from the very first seed round um, we've been there and so I feel almost related to it, like it's kind of family to me. And so part of that is just I can't help but be attracted to being involved with it. I also believe that one of the things that's been interesting about Twitter is its challenge these days is how to explain itself, right? Is the storytelling. And that's something that is normally relevant more in the early stages of the company, but it's been a challenge for the company and so I'm attracted to trying to help them solve that problem too. I feel like I have some something to contribute there you know, by virtue of the way I use it and how long I've been involved. I own a lot of the stock and I care a lot about how it's run, so I want to stay in touch with those guys. Maybe that's come back right. Sit! Oh! <laughs> See, now you're not even focused. Oh. Now you're just trying too hard.
I'm beginning to think that maybe you and Matt, the CEO of Automatic, have been playing on that table a little bit and I, I got suckered. I told you earlier, I like to play rigged games. I don't invest in companies where I don't think we have a competitive advantage to make it more likely to win. And I wouldn't challenge you to play badminton because I suck.